Hello and welcome to this exciting new video. In this one, I'm going to very quickly demonstrate how to use object-oriented programming to get your player class set up. So without further ado, let's jump straight into this. No waffle this time. As you can see in my script.rpy file, I've got my start label and all that I've got inside my start label is a game equals game and then a pause. And that is because the majority of our work is actually going to be done by the game class itself. And if we come into the game class, you can see what we've got here. In it one Python, that all I was doing is saying is once the game has started, I want it to run this Python code at the beginning and I want it to create a new game class. Now, the game class itself doesn't take any parameters, i.e. when we create an instance of this class, it doesn't ask us to type any properties in the brackets but it still has properties. As you can see, the player uh, is, is there, and that is another class, and we're gonna talk about that in a minute. So we, kick, so we add to our game class an instance of the player class. We also have a mode, which I've just labeled pre for the time being. Then it's got a playing equals true. This means that this, this class itself can be used to control the main game loop when we get to that stage. So, Let's talk through this one last time just to make sure everybody's on board with what's happening. This is just a class. This is a definition of a category, basically. When we create a new game, when we start a game, we create a copy of this category with the relevant information. And in this case, we don't ask the player to input any data. They just It just creates a, a, an instance of the game class. The game class itself only contains three things copy of the player class or an instance of the player class the mode pre and playing true playing is a boolean variable mode is a string and then player is a type that we've defined in the player class which we'll look at in a minute now the mode itself doesn't really matter at the moment because we only have one game mode and that's whether it's playing or not but once we get further into the development of a game we may have different things that the player can be doing for example going to the shops or interacting with other players or just walking around the world then we can actually use modes to determine what is actually going to be displayed on the screen when the player does that so for example if the player is just walking around the world we don't necessarily need all different kinds of flashy images and stuff being shown on the screen we don't need a whole bunch of data being shown at the top of the screen or whatever so we can use a game mode, a string called game mode, just to determine what we're actually going to show on the screen. Now we're going to jump into the player class. So remember, when a player creates a new game, i.e. when you hit the start new game button, it creates a, an object based on this game template. Within that object, we have a player, i.e. the game has to have a player. And then the player class itself has, at the moment, only two properties realistically. Yeah, we've got money, XP, level, but they're all just set to default values of 0, 0, and 1 at the moment. <clears throat> and you'll notice that they are also not passed in as parameters. These are the default variables, default values for those things. Now, unlike other programming languages, there's no such thing as private and public uh, access levels for your variables however it's still good practice to use uh, access levels after a fashion because we don't want to accidentally set a value incorrectly so rather than directly accessing money xp and level and name and nickname what we do is we have getters and setters so as you can see, we, we've decided that those are going to be our variables. And then once the player is initialized, because this is the, ver the method that is called when the player is first created, what's going to happen is it's going to tell you, Rempai say, your name is now set to blur and your nickname is blur. And as you can see, it's using the methods get name and get nickname for those two outputs. Now, the name variable itself, you can see here, self.name with an underscore. Underscore means that it's quote unquote private, so we shouldn't be accessing it directly. We're saying self name equals set name. So we're actually running a method to get the value of this. And the method itself is here. <clears throat> As you can see, set name, PC name equals rempy input. So we're asking the player to input a string of up to 25 characters long. Then we're removing any spaces and stuff from it 
just to check that it is actually a variable and the player just hasn't hit space bar a couple of times. And then we're going to check if it has, if the player has done that, then we're just going to set the default value to be John. And then we're going to return whatever the value of that string is back into this attribute or this field of the class. Now, I will eventually do the same thing with nickname, but nickname is going to be a little bit different because the player is not going to be able to choose their nickname. It's going to be automatically assigned to them uh, from a list of possible options. Now, as you can see, we've got properties here set up. These are our getters, get name, get nickname. So this is how the player or the coder in, your, in this case, how you would access these properties. So yeah, you could just type underscore name to get the name, but what you should do a good programming convention is to use what we've done here where self dot get name and self dot get nickname because then we are not actually directly accessing these variables. We're using a method to access them so we don't accidentally set them wrong or anything like that. Okay. So the more you get into programming, the more you're going to realize that this is actually quite relevant. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to write getters for our money, XP and level. So we're going to start off by declaring it as a property, property like that. And then we're going to say define get money. And it's going to be targeted at itself. And then all we have to do is return underscore self, sorry, dot underscore money. And then we're going to do the same for get XP. like so and then yeah you've guessed it okay so now we've written those three getters what it means is that when we want to use the player's XP, money, or level, or name, or nickname elsewhere in the game, we're going to call these methods rather than the variables themselves. This just means that, as I said, we don't accidentally interfere with the values of those things. And if we want to do that, we will just type, and when we're outside of it, it would just be player dot get name player dot nickname player dot get money that's actually spelled wrong i'm glad i caught that get money otherwise that would of course confusion further down the line okay now we're also going to want to have variables that allow us to interact with these values so for example if i want to add xp so in this case we need to do a value a, a method called uh, get or add xp so we want to, this time it's not going to be a property. It's going to be define uh, add XP. And we're actually going to take in a property this time called value. <clears throat> or we'll just put num instead because the value is actually a, a keyword. So we're going to take in this and then we're going to check that number is that num is actually an integer before we actually add it to our uh, XP level. Otherwise, we're not going to be in a very good position because there is a possibility that that might cause a crash. If someone, if, if we make a mistake and we type in a string there or something, then that could cause problems. Now, it's not probably going to be a problem for us because we're writing the class. And as you can see, I haven't commented the class yet. I'm going to do that in a bit. But what we need to be able to do is we need to be reasonably sure that if we were to die tomorrow and someone else were to take over that they wouldn't necessarily know by this name num that it should be an integer they might try to add a floating point number or something which will cause problems further down the line when we try to do with arithmetic because rampile python struggles with um, doing arithmetic on different types of number so what we need to do is make sure we're 100% clear that this needs to be an integer. So we'll skip across that step just for a moment and we'll just put in the logic for it. So add XP and then we're going to say self dot underscore XP plus equals num. And then that's all that method is going to do. Now in order to double check that this is actually an integer, what we need to do is we need to type another command here. So if 
is instance and then we're going to take in uh, the word num and then we're going to check that it's actually an integer and all we have to do here is just type in int like that now all that's doing is it's saying if num is an instance of the integer type then we're going to carry out this instruction otherwise it's just going to move on so if somebody does try to cheat and they type in a floating point number or if someone's coding this and they fluff it up then they're not going to have any success here so let's just add some comments here <coughs> just so that we are 100 percent clear on everything that's happening here okay so the first thing we need to do is just type in this is the player class and then here we'll just say following fields as so. Like so, tell a player what their name is and what their nickname is. Okay, so this method just asks the player for their name. Nice and simple. And this method. Now, if, if these were more complicated methods, if there were a lot more going on here, then we would add comments in the class in the method itself explaining what each line does um so for example i could say um remove the spaces and then check the name is not empty and if so set default name there you go so now we know what this guy's doing so this we haven't written yet and then these are our getter uh, methods so we'll just say like that and then this is not obviously not a getter this is an add xp so there we go so these these don't need kind of specific um comments to them because they just get us so it's just our way of getting access to these values so we don't need to write lengthy explanations to that as i said this one is not a getter so this one will need a small uh, in a number of comments and then <clears throat> there we go and now we've commented this so that if someone were to read this later on, they would be able to figure out uh, what all of this does without having to faff around trying to re reverse engineer the code. And um, that's pretty much all I want to talk about today. Um, this is kind of a, a little bit of an instruction on coding conventions in Python and um, how to use object oriented programming in a more practical way. You can see that the player is being asked for their name. And if we just type in whatever we want our name to be you can see your name is now set to dave and your nickname is nickname because we haven't actually got a method that's picking the random nickname yet but that's essentially all there is to that and so that just shows us that this method works thanks very much for watching that guys i hope you found that useful let me know what you think in the comments below and i will see you in the next one but until then you take damn good care of yourselves all right bye bye